All right, go ahead and be seated. So um, this weekend, something really interesting has been happening. Um, we told you at the very beginning when we started worshiping at Becca that it took about 90 hours, a man hours, for, to set this place up. Well, this weekend we've been doing this portable church uh, load in. We've gotten all new equipment. That's why there are a few kinks that you're going to give us a lot of grace on today, right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're learning new equipment and new sounds, so everything's being tweaked. But the dream is that that 90 hours gets cut way down. So yesterday, uh, the experts trained the trainers, and then they're hoping to get more and more people engaged, so this becomes a whole lot easier process. We've been having to load in on Saturdays, and now we're hoping that we can do that all on Sunday mornings. Isn't that amazing? And that, that's really going to help simplify our life as we uh, put this focus on worship, but also getting us uh, about the ministry that God's calling us to. So I wanted to recognize everybody who showed up yesterday to help get trained. If you did that, would you stand up? Yeah, a lot of people. I mean, that is a huge amount of people. Wait. There are a lot of people who are always behind here and you don't see them, but I wanted to recognize them too. I mean, they're, they're, they make the magic happen. Okay. Awesome. 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 Okay. Thank you. And, uh, you know, Paul Nye's leadership in this and, and, and Justin helped with the live stream. We could name so many people, but it, it takes a Herculean effort for this to go from an auditorium to worship every week. So, hey, jump in and help us do this. It's actually really fun. So thank them one more time. Go. Thanks. Very big deal and very cool stuff. All right, um, and also my throat isn't cooperating today, so we're going to see how this goes. Mm. If you want to pr pray for me, that'd be good. All right, so um, Mother's Day, lots of things to say about Mother's Day, but um, one thing that's true about this mother is that I really love to laugh. In fact, a few years ago, I was in uh, New York City, and Mark was trying to get in touch with me in New York City. It's a long story, but... Uh, what happened was I lost my phone in a blizzard, okay? My daughter was with me. Her phone was out of juice. And we kind of got the message to Mark that we were going to go to an AT&T store, make our way somewhere in Manhattan and find that so we could replace the phone. So Mark was trying to get in touch with us. So he went through uh, the directory and started dialing AT&T stores in Manhattan. So uh, he was calling, and, and he was on the phone with one of the people, and he heard me laughing in the background. And uh, he said, that's my wife, you know, okay. And so that's how we got in touch. It's, it's true. I really, really love to laugh. Uh, Fred Allen, the comedian, said this. He said, it's, it's bad to suppress laughter. It just goes back down and spreads to your hips, right? <laughs> and, of course, I wish it was only suppressed laughter that makes for big hips, but that's not true. Even the reformer Martin Luther had something to say about laughter. He said, if you're not allowed to laugh in heaven, I don't want to go there, right? Okay, so me too. Amen. On this Mother's Day, uh, I bet all moms in the room would agree with me that if you're a mom, you have to be able to laugh. There's a four-year-old and a, a six-year-old, and they were very excited to give their mom a Mother's Day present, and they had picked out this house plant. So they brought it to mom, and, uh, but the, uh, one of the kids, the older kid, was a little bit sad as, as, as she gave the gift to her mom, and, and she told her mom, she said, there was this bouquet that we wanted to give you at the flower shop. It was really pretty but it was too expensive. It had this ribbon on it, and it said, rest in peace. <laughs> and, and, and we thought it would be perfect because you keep telling us that you need a little peace and you want some rest, right? <laughs> you know, you got to be able to laugh at your kids, at what they do. And as they get older, you're going to be able to laugh with your kids. And, you know, we all have these um, family jokes in our family that our kids roll at, roll their eyes at, ask them, um, ask them about Mark's really awesome version of the song Dynamite. I mean, deep inside, I know they think it's funny, but they're going to roll their eyes uh, when, they, when you ask them about it. But most important as a mom, you have to be able to laugh at yourself. One of my best friends wrote me this note when we were raising our uh, kids when they were real little, and this is what she wrote. She said, well, just to make you feel better about yourself, Marnie, here's what I did this afternoon. My son's doing great in his big boy pants and now is totally potty trained. But this weekend, he wasn't feeling well. He couldn't make it to the bathroom in time, and I was rinsing out his pants while I flushed when they slipped out of my hands and were flushed away. 
That's right, one pair of incredible Hulk undies is somewhere in our sewer system. I called four plumbers for opinions on what to do, and most said that it would probably just uh, pass right through. One plumber said he would come out to put a camera down the toilet and to snake it out for a base fee of $1,000. He laughed and said, that's one expensive pair of underwear. I hung up on him. <laughs> yeah, okay. As a mom, you uh, have to be able to laugh. You know, we all love to laugh. We, we love to laugh with people we know and love, and uh, we laugh at jokes, and we laugh when we remember good times that we've had together. But other times we laugh with people, and it isn't such a good experience. There's nervous laughter when your boss asks you into his office. Or nervous laughter when you hear an inappropriate joke or hear a person making fun of their spouse in public. And laughter is, is interesting. It, it, it can also reflect something very deep within us. One psychologist defined laughter this way. He said, laughter is a contagious, explosive release of tension affecting everyone exposed to it. He went on to say that laughter can reflect all kinds of emotions, and we can't always tell what a laugh means, since that same laugh could express great emotions that are completely opposite of each other. In the Bible, there are only two instances of laughter in the New Testament, and only a few in the Old Testament, and today we're going to look at a mom who laughs. And when she laughs, it's reflecting something very deep in her soul. One time she laughs, and it's this, this cynical, doubting laugh at God. And the other laugh is this delightful, trusting laugh with God. Now, I've laughed both ways. And I bet you'll recognize these laughs in your life, too. But before we read the scripture, let me give you some background. Way back in the beginning of Genesis, there's these two people, this Abram and Sarah. And before God called them, Abram, which means father, God calls him and, and, and he asks him to leave his home and to leave his family. He says, Abram, you're supposed to be the guy, and he renames him Abraham, which means uh, father of all, of many he says, Abraham, you're supposed to tell the world about me. That's your job. And he promised that when Abraham did that, he would give him land. And he would give him many, many children. And that was God's job. So Abraham had his job. God has his job. The couple leaves their hometown and they have all this hope and all this expectation of the life that they're going to have. But they also have a little bit of anxiety. Sarah especially. She had no idea what life was going to be like. She didn't know where she was going. She was leaving her family. And she was following Abraham. Putting all her trust in God and in her husband. So they did that. And then years went by. Years went by. God had told them that they would have descendants as numerous as there are stars in the sky. But the years kept going, and there was no sign that children were coming. So at this point in their life, Sarah had practically given up hope that she would ever have a ch child. And then into her everyday life comes three people who have a message for her from God. This is what it says. Then one of the messengers said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind them. Abraham and Sarah were already very old. And Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I'm worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But God said, yes, you did laugh. 
So Sarah's cynical, doubtful laugh. It's one of experience. God had made this promise to Abraham 24 years ago. Abraham would be a great nation. She would have children. And she had believed that at first. But decades later, really? She couldn't allow herself to think that it could even be possible. Sarah was barren. Abraham was old. Sarah was way past childbearing age. So that was three strikes. And three times the difficulty. Sarah's laugh was not unreasonable. Just a chapter earlier, Abraham had laughed too when he had gotten this update from God. God was still planning to give them a child. And it didn't seem to phase God that Abraham was 99 and Sarah was 90. The couple had carried out their part. They'd done their job. They had loved God. They had trusted God. But God hadn't done his yet. Still, they didn't have one child of their own towards the many that God had promised them. And the years just kept going. Who could blame Sarah for her laugh? In that moment, Sarah was faced with something her limited mind simply couldn't grasp. She didn't know what to do. She was incredulous, so she laughed. Sarah couldn't believe that God would intrude in her life and work his wonder. She wasn't sure that God would keep his promises. At this point, it wasn't believable. So when God's messenger shows up, gives her the message, and calls on her about that laugh, she denies it. She does not want to admit that she doubts God. She would like to believe that a miracle is possible, but she doesn't. And God won't let her off the hook. He won't let Sarah deny her honest emotions of disbelief. He sees through that lie of, I didn't laugh, with just this very simple rebuttal. Yes, Sarah, you did laugh. Maybe what God was saying to Sarah was that, I, I know it's hard for you to believe, Sarah. I know it's hard for you to believe what I promised. Everything about it seems upside down. It seems topsy-turvy, according to the ways of the world. Sarah, you, you did laugh, but that's okay. You're not the first and you're not the last to laugh at what seems impossible. But Sarah, that doesn't mean it can't happen. Sarah, here's the answer to your laughs and, and your doubt. Is anything too hard for God? And we fast forward a year later, and baby Isaac is born. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. And when his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. God made the promise. God worked his plan, even though the timing and the way was not what Sarah wanted. It wasn't what Sarah expected. But God did what he said. Now this couple that had trouble walking was going to be chasing around a toddler. And then they named him. They named their son Isaac, which in Hebrew means he laughs. Their son of laughter would always remind them of their doubts. But it would also remind them of God's promises. See, their son Isaac is proof that God keeps his promises. Isaac is this living and breathing reminder that God really does act 
in their personal history. God can do what is impossible and what's improbable. Isaac, their son, would be a witness to the world for God. And now her laugh is different. See, her first laugh was all about disbelief and and doubt and denial. But her second laugh was this confident trust in God. You know, when we hear the story of Abraham and Sarah, usually they're on this pedestal. In fact, they are heroes all throughout the New Testament. But don't miss this. They doubted. They laughed in unbelief. They struggled to understand what God was up to. God does not give us this story of Sarah so we can kind of fangirl and think how great she is. Moms, God gives us Sarah's story so we can see ourselves. When we doubt and when we laugh at God and when we cry because we don't understand, You know, the first takeaway from Sarah's story is just real simple. Friends, God is at work in every single circumstance. Even when you can't see it. Even when you don't believe it. See, that's God's job. That's his role. That's why he's God. I think moms in particular put a lot of pressure on ourselves to make things perfect. And in a way, when we do that, We're making ourselves God. And it takes a lot of practice to let go of that role. This past year, my little sister, Mandy, who lives down in Atlanta, had the joy of giving birth to a precious little girl named Caroline. Caroline has an extra chromosome, so she is our Downs little princess. Here she is. But Mandy... Uh, Shared with me, not long after Caroline was born, this this video, uh, she shared it with me, and, and it's really perfect for all moms. Here it is. I don't know what perfect looks like, but um, it it was something that I was striving for, to have the perfect family. When Mia was born, um, a doctor came in and said, I'm so sorry. I didn't doubt that I would love my baby, but I doubted that I was the right woman for the job. But she is the glue that holds our family together. She is the the light of our lives. Tell them about me, the sassiness. I think motherhood is about embracing who they were created to be. She's all fixed up. I was given this daughter to change my heart and to show me a different kind of perfect. Very cool flower ad, right? I love that. See, life is full of these things we can't control, that we can't make the perfect we dream of, but God's at work in us. God's changing our heart and making us the perfect he wants us to be. He's teaching us to trust. Now, I can't speak for you, but for me, trust takes a lot of practice. And parenting is one of the the places where we get the most practice. Like her. (laughs) See, when you first get pregnant, you, you have no idea what's in store. I remember we found out we were pregnant. We were so excited. We were overwhelmed by God's faithfulness when we heard that heartbeat for the first time. And we saw the ultrasound. It made every time I threw up, every time I couldn't sleep, every labor pain worth it. But we had no idea the challenges that we would face as parents. Parenting is like this this live lab for learning to trust God. There was a panic when we lost them at the mall for the first time and the second time. And that panic never, ever, ever went away. There was a pain we felt when 
when a child was betrayed by a friend. Or maybe when a child made a, a wrong mistake and was the betrayer. There was the weariness of having a, a two-year-old and, and a newborn and, and being so tired I could barely breathe. And feeling like I would never get to take a shower in peace again. There are times when I had to apologize to my kids because of something I said, something I did. There was this unforgettable ride to Scottish Rite Hospital where we drove 90 miles per hour around the, the Atlanta perimeter holding on to Anna who wasn't breathing, hoping that she would live. And as they got older, we're still trusting. We're still learning as we pray for their future spouses. And as we cheer with them through their victories and, and cry with them through their disappointments. And then there's just the everyday. The everyday stuff when things don't go the way you think they're going to go. Things don't go the way you want them to go. And you're just so tired and you don't know how you're going to make it all work. Well, in all of that, God wants to be God. God wants us to relax knowing that he's at work in all of it. God wants us to let him be God and to trust his goodness and his faithfulness no matter what's going on. God wants us to laugh and enjoy life knowing that God himself is faithful. And that brings me to the second truth that we all need to take away. We can laugh and we can trust God. You know, there are plenty of other unpredictable things that all of us in this room will face. Some of them will have to do with our jobs. Some of them will have to do with our marriages. Or trying to have children. Or aging parents, how to care for them. There'll be balcony moments where we can't believe, wow, how great it is. We're at the top of our game. But there'll also be plenty of basement moments where our hopes are shattered, and where our disappointment is so much that we don't even want to talk about it. There'll be things to laugh about, and there'll be things to cry about. I mean, you know this. You have no idea what you will face this next year. You have no idea what's coming at you in five years from now. We just don't know what we'll experience. Now, I came across the craziest thing on YouTube. There are tons of crazy things you can see on YouTube. But this one's pretty amazing. It's a Chilean base jumper named Julio Munoz. And he rode his motorbike off a 4,000 foot high cliff in the Andes Mountains on purpose. Here's what it looks like. You know, life can be an awful lot like that. Parenting can be an awful lot like that. It's an adventure with thrills. It's an adventure with chills. But friends, if we're going to live life full, if we're going to live life this side of heaven, knowing that God is faithful, sharing with that, sharing that with the world, it's all a risk. It's a risk. But it's a risk with a constant. See, God wants you to experience him like that parachute. You are never on your own. God is able to do what he says he will do. He's able to do what's impossible. He always keeps his promises. When we think he can't do it, he can. When we have lots of questions... God has answers. When we're at the end of our rope, when we don't know what's around the corner, God.
God is there. He's the hope that you need. He's the grace you don't deserve, but he gives anyway. He'll give you purpose in your life that you can't have without him. See, he's waiting to hear us laugh. Not because we don't believe he's with us, but because we know he's faithful and we know he's with us. There's so many studies that say that laughter really is the best medicine in your life. It's been proven to reduce stress and to give more sleep and to even fight T-cells. So it's simple. Trust God and laugh. See, when you have that kind of laugh, that laugh will change every part of your life. And that laugh, my friends, will change the world. Let's pray together. God, we want to believe, but we need you to help us with our unbelief. There are many moms here and many parents here and many people here who are wanting to trust you with something in their life. So God, by your grace, would you give them courage? Would you remind them that you're faithful and your faithfulness didn't stop with Abraham? Your faithfulness meant that you loved us all the way to the cross you sent Jesus to do for us the most impossible because of him. When we give our life to your son, we're forgiven and we're free to be your people. God, would you help our lives show the world that you are faithful and that you are with us. And when we forget God, because we will, would you allow someone in our life, someone in this room maybe, to remind us. Keep us laughing as we trust you. And we pray it all in the name of Jesus. Amen.